So now um, I'd like to show you guys what the inside of our house looks like. We're gonna see some really cool stuff. We're gonna see some cool history. So I'm gonna show you the closet that Virginia was actually, that she actually uh, hanged herself in. And then we're gonna see some of the creepy rooms. Um, we're gonna see her ashes. It's gonna be really interesting. Um, so sometimes as soon as you walk in here, people have like really bad feelings in a lot of ways because if you can see, our house is super old, uh, and the, all the wood, all the woodwork is completely original um, to our house. Everything in here is exactly how it was when Governor Stubbs lived here. Uh, and in this room too, is the furniture is completely the same as how Governor Stubbs had it. Of course, it's different, it's different for, uh, furniture, but it's in the exact same locations that uh, Governor Stubbs had it. We want to keep the history and kind of just like, that's how we kind of commemorate or uh, for say, Governor Stubbs, and we like to have incorporate. These are all new blinds, actually. I haven't seen. It. Uh, we like to. I don't know. I don't know why we do that exactly. I just. I just think we like to keep the history, like to remember our history and remember um, that our, that this house wasn't originally ours, and we like to keep this first floor exactly the same as how he kept it uh, in a lot of ways because we want to respect uh, Governor Stubbs. And we want to respect like how beautiful the house is and how fortunate we are to have it today. Um, so that's why I think we keep it the same. That's why we don't change or alter anything on this floor. And the house is completely original, except we did do a, we did do an addition. Um, and I can show you that from the exterior. But um, all this is all original um, paint and wood. I mean, it's been repainted, but uh, same colors that it was back in the day and everything. Um, so over here. In here, this is where the ashes are, um, and we've tried to get in here, but we've never been successful. Um, I'd love to get in here and find out. So right in here is the closet um, in which Virginia uh, I was I hanged herself. Um, and it's really creepy because we actually still use it as a functioning closet. Um, and what's creepy about it, and, and it makes a lot of sense because um, the closet actually goes a lot higher than the rest of the closets in the uh, fraternity. It gets another like three or four feet up there. Um, and like I said, like these walls were changed and everything when uh, we renovated, but um, yeah, right up there is where she hanged herself. How does that make you feel? It's a little weird in there, honestly, because knowing that someone committed suicide in that exact room closet is a little disheartening. So it's a little weird, and it's always weird being in there, but nowadays people just think of it more as a closet, but whenever you're in there, you definitely think about it, and it's a weird thing. It's certainly been an interesting year. No one could have predicted. Wendy Garrett is a former broadcaster and current radio host. But uh, during this time, there have also been some opportunities. She considers herself an intuitive, not a psychic medium. When I first learned about Virginia um, and the history of Sigma Nu, the, the things that were in that history in that day going on, I felt that, that there there was more to the story, that this wasn't completely developed. This was a bit of jumping to conclusions. There were some um, character uh, flaws that were being applied because of an assumption or judgment and because of the gossip that would have been prevalent at that time for whatever reason, whether it was political, whether it was a relationship, you know, something about that. Um, I felt that the story had an agenda. So that was, my, that was my impression when I first heard about this story, because what I picked up on didn't mesh. When I do any kind of 
event or a reading or something for somebody, I don't want any information because then I might accidentally project, interpret, imprint my stuff. So the goal in any kind of reading is to be blank, is to clear your mind. It's a clear channel. You come, uh, they call it a hollow bone, that so that you are completely um, not involved, not emotionally attached. You don't have an agenda. I want to prove something. So that's basically why I prefer to go in without information. Uh, you can pick up on somebody else who's there. You can also then, you know, that gets a misdirect because you're picking on somebody else's emotions or impressions. I always try to stick with the simple stuff first. Rob Garcia co-founded Elite Paranormal of Kansas City and has been featured by major publications such as the LA Times for his private investigative work. I think the shows kind of make it seem like the minute you walk into these places, bam, boom, there's tons of activity and things are coming out of the walls at you and that sort of thing. It's not true, typically, in my experience. You're talking about sitting in the dark with an audio recorder or a camera with lots of other equipment, maybe environmental measurement equipment running at the same time for hours on end and then you're recording all that data on multiple devices that you will take back later and review in real time each device in order to decide or find out if you had any activity, any electronic voice phenomenon, any type of things captured on camera, any type of movement, any type of anomalies that you can't explain. Typically, you're there to find that one in a 20 investigation moments. Today, Rob Garcia owns the 1858 Garnett House Hotel. During the time known as Bleeding Kansas, it is said that the famous abolitionist John Brown hid escaped slaves in the attic of this home. Rob took our video crew on a tour. At the same time, like I said, this was the center of the Underground Railroad. So I believe they were shuttling slaves. John Brown was one of them, shuttling slaves through here. Do you keep the wedding dress and the dolls and all that? Yeah. To scare the, people? The well, here's the deal. Um, we used to live stream this place through our security cameras through, uh, so the dress is really more of a historic piece. Mm -hmm. um, and the picture's kind of to represent one of the managers of this place in the 1880s, Mrs. Simon. So this day, in its early days, a hotel was called the White House Hotel for a certain amount of time. When Garnett was being built, they put a candle up in the shutters in the attic, and you said you could see this from seven miles away coming into town uh, in covered wagons, in their wagons, because this is the highest point Garnett. Oh, I thought I was hearing something. No, nah, there's a lot of activity. <laughs> okay. So. I got a really weird feeling when I came into this room, so. It's a. Uh, I don't know why. Do. I don't know why. Now, this I is just, the attic entrance. This not is where. I'm trying to exaggerate. Rob continues to restore the property and open it to guests by appointment. So this is probably the oldest room in the place and probably the. Uh, investigators <laughs> this is probably the roughest room in the place um, in need of probably it's probably gonna have to get its attention earliest uh, because it's so old is that so you just mentioned that the the idea that investigators leave things around to for the the well the energy to they're trying to get it to move to, to move yeah so they're trying to get you know, an evidence when from their investigation, the thing's moving. So typically they'll put out toys and stuff like that, see if they can, they'll put cameras on it for hours on end and maybe overnight, you know, and watch it and see if it moves while they're sleeping hmm. downstairs or something. Someone here in the Garnet house with us. Hi. Did they just say hi? Rob and Wendy were part of a paranormal group to investigate the Stubbs Mansion about 10 years ago. One of the Sigma Nu employees, somebody who does work, handyman type of work, on site, by himself, alone, knowing there's nobody else here, so these funky things that are happening to him 
are really getting the best of him because it's it's unsettling when you see something or hear something or feel something because he also had the occasion of feeling like he had been touched and then seeing or feeling um, a presence um, a, whether it's a glimpse or something knowing something else is there and then having his tools when he's got them on the table having the screws fall off the table when he's got his back turned so he's trying to figure out okay what else is going on here it's got all sorts of possibilities who would be bothering him as it turns out because of the way he was touched it seemed like it was a feminine energy so that story came to light as we were called in to do this investigation the investigations were quite interesting we walked with Wendy she kind of centered on a certain room in the house where she felt like was the center of all the activity that she was picking up on so that's kind of after investigating most of the building we all kind of ended up there in this one room it turns out that was Stella's sitting room back in the day spirit wise there wasn't just that spirit going on there but multiple people in that location There are more players there um, stirring the pot. <laughs> There's a little lady there. This person, this being, this energy had seated itself. And it's a woman, an older woman, who's sitting in a chair, you know, like an outdoor chair. She's like an old housekeeper, somebody who was either looking over the students or caretaking somebody in that family. But she's comfortable, and this is her space. She's not bothering anybody. Who, me? I just slept here. For a lot of people, they're having more time alone, which they aren't used to. They might not have the same kind of influences, the same kind of social happenings, engagements, responsibilities in a way. So it's actually a tremendous time, a resurgence for consciousness. You, be, you can become more aware of what your own thoughts are, and maybe you need to shut those thoughts down because they're not helping. So go back to what is it that I can learn from this? What is this moment meant to teach me? instead of being a victim be proactive and say there's a reason so what can i learn how can i expand my consciousness my awareness my knowledge my knowing maybe i need to expand my patience and then you develop an ability to understand when there is a quiet time there's an opportunity to pick up on things that you might not be able to during a time when you've got all sorts of upheaval chaos 24 7 all of a sudden you have a wonderful opportunity to say, I've got space. What else is here? Because that's when you learn there's a lot more here. We have things that happen around us that we just assume it's an accident. What's interesting was this morning I got this wonderful fragrance and I'm thinking, what the heck? And I knew it's a presence. So what is this about? Why? Why is this here? Clean slate. Let's not assume we know what happened here. Let's assume we have a haunted house. We don't know who's there. We're going to find out. We're going to do our due diligence. We're going to ask questions. We're going to find out what other stories were happening at that time. And we're also going to know that we're going to have encounters in that house. Wendy's felt that like if there was this person in Virginia, that this girl then really wasn't there. That it, the most likely person she was picking up on being the spirit that roamed Sigma Nu was Stella, the wife of the governor. So here we are at Sesquicentennial Park. Behind me are three stones. The years that we're working with, 1911, 12, and 13. The cool thing about that is they don't have any names, no dedications on them. They're completely empty, blank slate. And you know what's going on right now? This is an opportunity to put something on there. But keep it clean, fresh, open, optimistic, not judgmental, 
just the facts. Supposedly, like, there's a, there's a plaque, and it always escapes me what the plaque says. There's a fireplace with a plaque on it. And supposedly that was determined that that was related to her and that her ashes were in the back of this fireplace hidden, which we know is not true. There's no ashes hidden in any kind of urn or... We did an extensive census search around those time periods for every census. And for the residents living in that house, none of them was named Virginia. And it really there wasn't anyone that matched that uh, biographic or uh, age or, or anything to, to her that we could tie and say, oh, this was probably her. So I think one, one um, really admirable part of Governor Stubbs is that he came from essentially poverty as a, a poor farmer in a Quaker community and he built a railroad contracting empire and he became a millionaire at a relatively young age, which is pretty remarkable. And then I also think it's interesting that his political career didn't really end on his own terms. Governor Stubbs did run for the U.S. Senate seat in Kansas in 1912, which was a, kind of a bad year for Republicans, so we lost to a, a Democrat that year. Uh, and then he ran for governor again in the 1920s, and he failed to win the nomination um, each time. So his career probably didn't end the way he wanted it to end. Being a very good politician, being a very active person, it was probably hard for him to, to sit around and be inactive during the last two decades of his life. Well, you know, the progressive movement continues, politics continue, and he's just having to sit on the sidelines during that period. That, for me, um, what I am being given right now is that it helps to understand that today's values and morals are not the same as they were then. There were a lot of loose ends and a lot of different kinds of associations that served a purpose that were not deemed as un... Um, we have such rigid guidelines and beliefs, they were not seen as negative, they were seen as necessary because it helped people to continue in their role um, and not straying in the public where there might have been other opportunities to, to uh, create more mischief and mayhem and uh, more headlines that would have, would have sunk somebody's political aspirations. Now I'm giving you overview here because this is what I'm picking up on. And this is what apparently it was missing from that particular equation. But the word paramour has more value for the Virginia than it does for Stella. Does that make sense? And there is a conflict between the two. But it wasn't one that was going to end up in a, in, um, in a murder. What's going on right now, especially there would have been class issues at that time. And there would have been people who desperately needed to jump up to a different station in life. And they were going to take advantage of any way possible that they could get that. And right now, it's a reflection of things that we need to go back and reassess. How far have we come and how far do we still need to go? Because there's always, um, in some way, shape, or form, some kind of... The, the, the game is stacked in favor of a certain element and it'll be different but throughout history that's always been a part of our our background somebody always had an advantage that's still happening and back then the same thing so in in the way i see it this is a repeat because you have people who are at very different stations in life and each one wants to make their own um their own way and may need to step on somebody else to do it well is that the way we want to be do we want to be that kind of society where the only way we get ahead is to step on everybody else well, that makes a really poor, in the long run, um, if we're talking about the species surviving, we're getting rid of a lot of potential assets in trying to be the one and only, because the one and only usually means isolation and then eventually um, defeat, because, you know, you can only go so far with one. <laughs> you need many. <laughs> So much is made of the ashes contained. But this fire still burns, strife fanning its own flame. 
The truth is right in front of us in bold black and white. It couldn't be written more clear. Stubbs family inscribed this tribute for leaders who suffered in the bleeding Kansas era on freedom's frontier. As America's marginalized people are still maimed and muted, which part of our hateful history did you want to see refuted? The spirits are reminding us civil war allows hatred to shut the world of love in. Will we continue denying the truth, or is it finally time for listening? Are the spirits speaking to you? And if so, how are you answering their calls? What if it's just Stella and Walter who are still lobbying these halls? <laughs>